Hello, you're watching Avenue X, and today let's talk about a recently started airing Chinese period drama, 一念关山 A Journey to Love. This is a 40 episodes period drama that has started airing on the platform 爱奇艺 It is led by 刘诗诗、刘宇宁。Fang Yilun, He Lan Dou, Chen Haoyu, Chang Hua Sen. For the detailed information, I'll put it up on screen here. There are a couple of things that's really interesting about the makeup of this drama crew. First, it is credited to two directors. One of them, Zhou Xi, was the director of the Ultimate Note. I know a lot of my audiences are a fan of that drama. Then, the lead director is credited to a guy named Zhou Jingtao. Previously, he was known as Zhou Yuanzhou. And that name may jog some people's memory as he was the director of the 2018 super popular BL adaptation drama Guardian Zhenghun, and he changes his name every time he takes on new projects. And he also used the name Zhou Jingtao for being the director of another BL adaptation drama Sha Po Lang, also a priest's novel led by Tan Jian Si and Chen Zhe Yuan that we may never get to see. And it just happens to be that the lead male character's name in A Journey to Love is. Ning Yuan Zhou Yuan Zhou is exactly the same as the director's previous artist's name. The other interesting thing about it is this is an original script drama, and the writer is none other than last year's popular but also contested period drama, A Dream of Splendors writer. John Wayne. For all the dramas and episodes of What Happened Last Year, if you are curious, you can. Try to look up my older videos I made last year about this drama. It ran into certain problems, and personally, I don't think it's actually that serious a crime that she committed. But somehow, internet judged her that she's unfitting and a bad writer, which I totally don't agree. By the time I'm making this video, I have just finished watching 18 episodes of this drama. So far, I'll give it 2.5 gold mine rating. If it doesn't crash and maintains the quality and gives me just one or two big surprises, okay, maybe I'm asking for too much. Then it's a three gold mine. Even Even though actually I don't think it's that great, like the greatest period drama. But given 2023 has been really bad for Chinese dramaland, okay, I will give it that. As usual, I'll quickly introduce you to the setup of the story, and we'll go into details. This drama is set in a fictional ancient time, and this writer has actually written things set in similar periods. That's based on real history, so it's almost like she's mixing it all up with this new creation. You'll see the shadow of the Ming Dynasty Zhu Qizhen story that she actually did not so long ago in Nu Yi Ming Fei Zhuan, also led by Liu Shishi. You can also see the shadow of the Song Dynasty Jing Kang Zhi Chi period of history. To make it simple, our male lead character, played by Liu Yuning, was the former deputy leader of one country's spy organization. Our female lead character, played by Liu Shishi, was the former deputy leader of another country's spy organization. At the beginning of the story, they both have left their previous position. The guy is in jail, and then he got sent into the army to fight the war against the female leads. Former serving country. While the female lead has left that organization five years ago, and everybody believed she's dead, and she's secretly investigating something. And these two countries are at war, and the female lead's former kingdom's king captured the male lead's kingdom's kin. So the male lead's country's court organized a diplomatic group and has to travel to the female lead's former country to get their kin back. It just so happens that the male lead got called back, reinstated with the position, and charged with the task to send the whole diplomatic group safely to the female lead's former country to do that negotiation. And the female lead meets the male lead, and somehow she ended up in this same group, traveling with them. It includes a lot of characters, but I promise you, once you start watching, you'll very soon catch up, and it's very easy to understand what the heck is going on. Although it's actually a rather complicated story. Now let's get to the break it down and analyze part. I've already said in my weekly video that I really enjoyed this drama, so I'll put the not so perfect and could be improved on things first. There are two main things so far that this drama could have been improved on. Point number one: although it's not a pure 武侠 drama, it does have a lot of 武侠 element, a lot of fights, and compared to a lot of really bad. 武侠 fighting in drama land we've seen in recent three years. This is the better type, but still, it's not perfect. Liu Shishi used to be known as one of those idol drama actresses who can also do very good fighting 
due to her very strong dancing background. Now, she hasn't been doing that for over a decade. So this is her comeback drama to do fighting so intensively. Very understandable that as you age, you wouldn't be able to do that much fighting that well, particularly when you're not professional and you're not continuously training for that. She doesn't do very long takes of continuous fighting without cut as before. So this drama still has the type of problem that many other Chinese period dramas these days, when it has fighting scenes have cut, cut, cut between many different camera coverages to create that energy of the fighting, but not really letting you see a very complete full sequence, probably because that would be too hard to film. Also, unfortunately, I think while they were filming it, the male lead actor broke his leg or something. So for a period of time, he literally couldn't really move. And then you would resolve to stunt double and then freeze with a pose or slow motion, all that. It's not ideal, but this is an industrial sort of standard <laughs> slipping thing. In an ideal world, I would hope that fighting sequences could be better, but actually I don't have a huge problem with it. And compared to a lot of crappy stuff, they've already done, I think, as much as they can. Number two would be the two leads acting. I would say actually they have both surprised me. They have both outperformed my expectation, but honestly in an ideal world, if they could both be 30%, better, <laughs> if that's even possible to gauge at acting than they are currently now. It'd be just like even better, this drama would be perfect. But I also am not complaining with what I have currently. So now let's go on and talk about all the great things I expected or didn't expect of A Journey to Love. Point number one, this is a very rare drama that I don't speed through. And it has only happened twice this year before. Three Body is a drama that I didn't speed through and I actually rewatched it certain parts multiple times. The other drama was, oh no, here comes trouble. That drama I didn't speed through. Also, I rewatched quite a significant part of it and some parts multiple times looping. This is the third one that gets this treatment from me <laughs> this year. No speeding through and I have already started rewatching. And while I was rewatching, I noticed I actually missed quite a lot of details and that made me even happier. And that alone tells you it's very concentrated. It has no guo chang xi. The type of scenes that can be cut, it's just there to be filler, non-essential to the storytelling. It really doesn't exist in this drama. Everything is there for a reason. Every shot needs to be there. Point number two, kind of expanding on point number one, which is the story itself. This is a very well written story by this point, episode 18. Plot side, continuously cliffhangers and interesting thing happening has been done very well. Along the way of the plot development, every character gets really, really careful treatment and they all get developed very fully. Is this one of those rare dramas where, yes, it does have a male lead and female lead and they do take most of the screen time, but all the other important people in the story, they are all layered, complicated, and having their little moments character. And as you watch, you get to know them better and you fall in love with them more and more. We're gonna talk more about that when I talk about the actors part. On top of that, I also highly, highly appreciate so far all the ideas, the concepts, the bigger values that that has been expressed through the characters' dialogues, their conversations, their conflicts. So far, it doesn't have really any problems. I can see that potentially can get a scriptwriter further hated on China's internet. Between the male lead and female lead, for example, they've already had about three really interesting and deep conversations, not boring to look at when there are long conversations seen that are not detached from the mainline plot, but at the same time, really is very deeply analyzing the characters and having that conflict of thoughts going on. And also you can say that it has those values that are appreciated by 21st century people. It manages to mix all those things really, really well together. So this drama on the plot level, on the character level, and on the message level, the three levels so far have all done very, very well. Point number three, we have to go to the technicality part, the 视听语言, the visual and the audio language of the drama. It's by no means the best out there. It's actually really standard, but holy shit, it makes so much sense and it's not stupid. We've seen so many stupid visual and audio language of a drama this year. Back in 2018, when I was watching Guardian, I was on one hand ranting about how crappy a lot of that drama is and how cheap it is. The, the, 
props and the sets are just so fake. At the same time, I would actually talk to my film school classmate. I can tell they don't have money, okay? But they actually know what they're doing. Like particularly this director and the cameraman. They really know exactly what different framing means angle means how to flatter actors if you need to do any movement of one scene what would you do why do you do it what's the purpose of narrative like you can see that it's done by a person who got properly trained i remember that conversation very clearly even till today and i was like this director knows what he's doing even though they don't have money now five years later same director totally different type of drama period drama and this time it's not bl adaptation and they definitely have money you can still tell it's done by that person who knows what they're doing for every scene they know exactly what's the purpose of narrative what's the goal what's the atmosphere we need to achieve how are we gonna shoot the actor to set up the character so all the angles all the focal length all the editing camera movement it all makes sense it actually makes the actor look very very good and probably better than they look in most of the other dramas i've seen them being in it makes me want to watch sha po lang that much more just imagine chen zhe yuan and tan jian si's face being treated with kindness by this director oh. And this drama gives you the right example of how to use ridiculous big light. Because we have Zhu Dadeng previously having done two dramas this year that have shocked everybody. This drama also have very few scenes that are reusing big light. That totally is unnatural for the time period, for the actual environment. But it is so designed for that atmospherical outside of reality drama space shot that needs to be there for that moment of the story and it only needs to be there for that one shot once it goes back to the normal reality world it's no longer used in that way and that big light backlit shot is just like the right way of using big light right instead of stupidly just putting it in everywhere visual things aside i also highly appreciate the music the sound side of the things i'm not an expert sound mixer so sound effect i wouldn't go into details but the music is Wow. This time they found Chen Xueran again, who was the composer for Guardian Zhenghun back in 2018. And since then has composed many, many Chinese dramas, OSTs or theme songs. This time he is in charge of, I think, all the OST that are not having any lyrics, just the background music. And he wrote over 50. Some of them, yes, are reprised from the same tune, but like 50. And there are about seven, eight, nine, I can't even remember because they keep adding new ones as the new episodes show up. Songs also written for this drama. And they're all sung by perfect choices of singers, including Liu Yuning himself, including Yuan Yawei, who is known to have that very difficult to imitate a lot of air female singing voice, including Guang Liang. I'm like, wow, they managed to grab him and sing a song that's not written by himself. They even got Ren Xianqi back to sing a Jianghu song, which is wow, it brings all the memory back. And that guy is a legend, okay? And he's like, what? In his 50s? And he still sounds like he's 25. Incredible. And it also includes Guan Dazhou, who is the famous composer who did most of the music for the variety show National Treasure. And I've edited with his music previously, the Chinese style, very epic music. I have this drama's OST on my phone and I now walk with this music. So I go out and take a walk and I'm listening to the music and I tell you, you need at least three to four walks to finish looping once of all the songs or music that's in this album it is that freaking long and amazing last time i see a chinese drama having like over 50 tunes of ost was back in the days of love and destiny and then even earlier would be tomato peach blossoms this drama only aired 18 episodes so by the end we probably get like a 70 to 80 and music on this album that would be like what <laughs> first time ever for chinese dramas finally the fourth point let's talk about the actors and casting and the performances and i don't have all the time in the world so i'll talk mainly about four people that i really enjoy in their performance including the two leads so let's start with liu shishi liu shishi has the reputation of like she doesn't open her eyes <laughs> <laughs> for a long time in Dramaland. And in recent years, she hasn't been in that many good dramas. Back in the old days, when she started her career, she was in period drama, fantasy period drama, and wuxia Dramaland. And then also everybody really didn't say much good things about her acting. Mostly it was 
Like she's really good at fighting. And then her probably best remembered period drama roles would be her Scarlet Heart character Ruo Xi and also in Xianjian series. People would say all the good things about wow she has great posture but her posture probably is too good to be realistic and they would say she's really good at fighting and dancing but then she cannot quite act. And then her line delivery has always been a, a problem. So in this drama, they did use dubbing and I think it's a good choice for her because she naturally has a very soft, very, very soft voice when she acts and it probably is not fitting for her particular character. Then in the department of dancing and fighting, like I said earlier in this review, she's no longer 20 years old. You wouldn't expect her to fight the same way as she did before and she's not a professional fighter. But actually so far, I'm really happy with her quality of fighting. But the thing that surprised me and I'm so happy to see it, I think her performance in this drama has improved a lot from her previous period drama and also contemporary drama. The way she can convey emotion just on her face and through her eyes now has become a lot better. I really think this is her best performed character so far in her entire career. Even though she's not the best actress out there, it's really hard for me to imagine another actress in Chinese drama right now who can take this role and make it just as well as she has done. I'm just so happy that she took this project even though from day one all the people complained about that she is too big a star to be paired up with Liu Yuning. So let's talk about Liu Yuning. He's now getting a lot of hate on China's internet. Most people who don't watch his drama, they would just come out and directly just say he's ugly and he's not famous enough and he's not good enough. Therefore, why would he be paired up with Liu Shishi? Yeah, the people who invested money making his project really don't want to earn any money back. Come on, do you believe in that? Unless they're actually made totally for the money laundry purpose, which uh, it does happen, they won't make their money back. So they would pick people they think that would actually work for the story. I think he's actually a really good choice for this character. He's not the best looking guy out there in Dramaland for sure. And he comes from this weird background of being a chef, being an internet streaming sort of celebrity, being an internet singer, and then eventually ended up being an actor. I think because of all that complicated background and a little bit unusual a route of getting there, he actually is really suited for this role, who has very complicated and having a lot of social experience character who is in his 30s. He needs to also hold down a scene and he's tall. Like he's a really bloody tall guy with very extremely skinny, long, straight legs. Imagine if it's not him being the leader of his group and then Fang Yilun and Chen Youwei are still in the show. It would be weird because these two guys are also super tall. If you can get a taller guy than these two, it won't be a basically pretty formation when this group of five, six guys, you know, like all wearing their uniform and stand there. For that one purpose, there really aren't that many actors who can sort of pull that off with this ensemble. For people who complain about he's not good looking enough, this character never has been called handsome by anybody in the story. And he's known to be the spy leader, to be the good fighter and super clever, not known to be good looking. He's not playing the pretty boy. The pretty boy is Fang Yilun's character, which also is a perfect casting. So for the purpose of this story, actually he's really suitable. And his acting has been steadily improving from his character in The Long Ballad to his character in Heroes and to the character currently he's playing. His line delivery has also improved very steadily and it has gotten to the point where he's already better than a lot of professional currently working young male actors in Dramaland. I'm not gonna say the names but you watch my recent couple of videos and you'll know. He is kind of the ordinary guy kind of ended up in Dramaland eventually and who worked really hard to improve that type of taking it as a job and do a professional job well and try to do it better and better and hone your skill type of thing. That's what normal people do in this world. You hope you specialize in something and you do it better and better over time. He's doing that. And a lot of Huns in Dramaland who got a lot more money, a lot more fandoms, a lot more popularity are totally not doing that at all. Just for that. I highly appreciate this actor and I look forward to his future work. And I don't think he's ugly. He's just an okay looking guy. And besides, like with his height and his legs, you know, like I don't really care about it. He doesn't look like the most handsome guy in the world, you know? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I think 
if he could be an even better actor, it would be great for this drama. But so far, with what I've seen, I only have appreciation. Then the other two people would be Fang Yilun and He Lan Dou. Fang Yilun, <laughs> I have seen actually a lot of his stuff, although he always plays male second. And when he plays male first, that drama is so small that nobody is watching. He's a really good looking guy. He reminds you of a lot of good looking actors sort of combined together. Pretty good at performance. He also uses his own voice in his drama and his character is perfect for him to play in this drama. He is the pretty boy in the whole main group. I think this is his first Po Quan character. The character that's gonna make him get noticed in drama then. And after this, he's gonna get a lot better offers than he did before. It's sad that he's been in drama for so many years and done so many things and I've watched most of them actually and he just never made it. And I think this is the drama that's gonna make him. We will find out in 10 days time if that's the case. Then He Lan Dou, she is a really interesting young actress. She has been in also a lot of things and sometimes she gets the complaint about she's not doing a good job. Sometimes she gets really appreciated by suddenly explosive good performances. And this drama is her explosive good performance with a brilliantly written character. In a way, I would even say she's the so far most interesting female character in the whole drama. The main female lead played by Liu Shishi, although also a very interesting character, is more familiar and expected. He Lan Dou's character, the little princess, is wow, how, how, such a brilliant character. She's the typical character you would have in a hero's journey story where she starts as nothing and so weak and so little, have this trajectory. It's like a rocket shooting up and exploding and becoming incredibly different by the end of the story. This young actress, also with her own voice, did every stage so far perfectly. Her acting is extremely energetic and it really just brings out audiences sympathy with her tears and laughter and even her tone of her voice. And so far she's gotten a couple of scenes that are epic. The best moment a character can get. And I'm so thankful that the writer wrote such a great female character so far, so far, who is not the main lead. I look forward to her arc most as a character. And I think it's just gonna get sexier and sexier from now on. So overall, this drama in the department of casting, acting, performance is the probably biggest surprise I have with this drama. These are the main things so far by episode 18 that I can see that I really love about A Journey to Love. So the final thing would be the next 22 episodes. Every day I pray, do not crash. Unfortunately, in Chinese drama, we often see that happen. I can remember the couple of times when not so ideal things have happened. During Talan Jue Farin Debo, during Word of Honor, uh, Shang Ling, or during the ending of Guardian. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, oh, it's five years old scar, but when I think of it, I still want to blood coming out of my mouth. Yeah, I have been tortured by Chinese drama too much this year, so. <laughs> I just want a really happy Christmas gift. That should be the end of this kind of halfway review on a journey to love. Yi Nian Guan Shan from Avenue X. If this drama did do really well and it has a lot of other worth talking about things later, I'll make a, another video. So if you like this drama as well, <laughs> let's just pray together. And if you haven't checked out this drama, at least by episode 18, it's really safe and great. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama.